told that there was someone out there who looked just like you, your spitting image, everything from your bone structure to your unique beauty spot. Then imagine you found out that this person wasn't a person at all, but instead a sex doll. Well, our next guest, 25-year-old model Yale Cohen Aris, claims this is exactly what happened to her. She believes the sex doll company has used images of her without consent to create a racy toy that looks just like her. And Yale joins us now live from Israel. Uh, good morning to you. Hi. Thank you for Hi. joining us this morning. This is an extraordinary story, actually, and I'm so sorry that you're going through this. Um, to the beginning of your career, from the age of 18, you joined the Israeli Defence Forces and you were working there for about four and a half years and then you had this complete career change. Just explain what happened there. In my career, well, I started, you know, it's mandatory in Israel uh, going to the army. So I just wanted to extend my years a little more because I thought that maybe programming is uh, something that I, I want to do and I did. But uh, then I started using Instagram and social media and realized the potential it. And I also wanted to, you know, it was it hand in hand with my, uh, you know, childhood dreams to become an actress. So I figured out why not combine both my tech background with social media. And that's when I decided to go to independent work. Well, it is, a, yeah. um, it, especially explaining to the family what you're going to do, because you were in uh, sort of tech services, uh, tech science mm. within the security uh, forces. So that's a very good future career. But you branched off and decided, right, that's it. I'm going to I'm going to do this. Um, how did your family feel about you pursuing that path? Well, honestly, they wanted me to become, uh, you know, still be a developer, of course. They knew there are many uh, coincidences, as you can see, to uh, share yourself online. Uh, but eventually they realized that this is my dream and I and they want me to be happy. And, you know, you know, there is a coincidences to anything you do. So uh, consequence. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. English is not. Uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty good. Perfect English. <laughs> you um, so I mean, the, the consequences of what we're going to talk about now, because you went online with Instagram and various other websites and you became very successful, lots of followers. And it was one of these followers that said to you that have you seen this sex doll that has the same name as you? Yes, exactly. I received a message from one of my friends back at the time. I, I opened the, the link to uh, lead me to some forum where uh, they, back at the time, they, you know, talk about my uh, head prototype. So I really, I couldn't really understand what I'm looking at just a few months later where it was a sex doll for sale. So then when I realized, you know, the scale of it and what's going on. Well, I mean, sort of legally, we're supposed to say that, you know, it's alleged it looks like you. Um, but, I mean, it's a bit blatant because they use photos and videos from your Insta account to sell the thing. Um, if we look closely, this is how closely they followed you with your beauty spot. You have a, a little um, yes. sort of beauty spot underneath your, uh, underneath your lip, which they have... F that, you know, there's sort of proof. But also, it's even got your name. Yes, exactly. It's not just about the beauty mark and my name. I mean, because, you know, sex dolls, it's still dolls and there's, uh, you know, how amount to how they could look like human beings. But once it was connected to my identity, my images and videos and, and social media, so it's, there's no mistake in here. Yes. So how does that feel? I mean, I, I find it extraordinary. I mean, this really does come down to consent. I mean, they've allegedly like we said this is your identity that's being taken away and also for for the it's it's a sex doll so how does that feel seeing that um well i'll be completely honest i don't have anything against the sexual industry but of course the the problem here that they did it without my consent without my knowledge uh and also it's double wrong because what i said it's connected to my identity it's not just a doll that looked like me or inspired by me they never hid the fact it was developed from me so it's double wrong in that case and so um i mean you have sought legal help here obviously the the company are iron tech they're in china we've reached out to them multiple times but uh, for a right of reply but they haven't responded to us um it's going to be very difficult to to pursue this um, and COVID has obviously slowed it down as well. Um, if, if they came to you and said, would you accept a percentage of sales, would you take it? <laughs> 
<laughs> well, uh, no. And I think just first of all, it should get off the, you know, the shelves and, and that maybe we could talk what happened and how things went wrong and, and why. Uh, but I think there's something else I want to out of it and maybe the better income. And I'm not talking about uh, cons cons compensation, sorry. I think that uh, learning a lesson from this is, is the best thing to go out of this story. And this is what I hope to also uh, achieve by bringing the story up and, you know, bringing awareness because the, that's the, the thing that I try to pursue, you know, just to, you know, trying to bring a, a real conversation about our privacy. If we still want to, you know, share stuff online and let's be honest, this, the world heading to this direction, uh, the tech getting advanced. So we need to make this discussion about how we can protect our identities. And that's what I mostly want to receive out of it. I mean, is there any part of you that has, is flattered by the fact of all the women in all of the world that this company chose your image as kind of the ultimate woman that would, you know, people would fantasize over? Um, yeah, I, well, I wouldn't see it exactly that way, but you know what? <laughs> Everybody likes to feel attractive and, and maybe that's the, the, the positive side of it that I wanted to see because in everything that happened, even the worst thing, I always choose to see the bright side, the, the, just my personality. So I tried to figure out, okay, they, they did it without my consent, they use it for commercial use, it's a sex though, and, and all this crazy thing, but it doesn't mean that the people find me attractive. So I guess that I chose to, to see it flattering in, in that way. Yeah, they just took me a random girl from, you know, from Israel. And that was when I could I didn't have much following or, you know, present on social media. So it was pretty random. And that's the flattering uh, element in has that. It, yeah. Has it increased your following? No, no, I wouldn't say that, no. I think that it is extraordinary now and we're getting more, as you said yourself, uh, Danielle, that we're getting more and more into this. It happens in this country, mm. more with sort of online advertising mm. than your face, my face, uh, Martin Lewis's face have been used for online yeah. advertising that we've got absolutely nothing to do with. But for a company actually to make you as a, as a, as a, as a person, um, blatantly make you as a, as a sex doll, mm. uh, is a whole jump in a different direction. So there definitely does need to be some worldwide legislation here Although good luck with that one because um, it's going to be tricky. But thank you very much for talking to us today. Thank you. Thank you good so to much. You. Thank you so thank much. You. Thanks, Yael.